Coming up next on Avid Achievers, we will visit Point Pleasant Elementary School and their Avid Showcase. Hello and welcome to Avid Achievers. I am your host, Alexis Poganowski, Avid Teacher Specialist. Today on Avid Achievers, we will celebrate the Avid Movement at Point Pleasant Elementary School and visit their Avid Elementary Showcase. I am joined by Christopher Gordon, Principal, Becky Yost, and Mary Fuchella, Avid Elementary Liaisons. Welcome to the show. Avid on the rise at Point Pleasant. So Point Pleasant became an Avid Elementary School in 2016, and that was part of a movement to bring all of Glen Burnie's cluster schools into a um, AVID vertical model. Can you tell us a little bit about what you remember from the start of AVID then? Sure. Our AVID elementary journey began in the summer of 2016, so it was my first year as principal at Point Pleasant Elementary School. Um, we were able to attend the AVID Summer Institute in Philadelphia, both myself, Ms. Fuchella, Ms. Yost, and our school counselor at the time. Ms. Holcomb attended the conference. Um, at the conference, we were able to meet as a team and learn the, the foundation of what AVID really looks like um, at the elementary level. At that time we were able to um, create our site plan and just really look forward to the 2016-17 school year and formulate a, a plan of action to uh, become an AVID elementary school. So it was a great way to kick off our, our AVID journey in the summer of 2016. So, and at Summer Institute I'm sure you learned how AVID's mission is to create college and readiness skills and for all of our students, even our youngest learners now in elementary. And um, so it's an initiative that is shaped around four domains around leadership, systems, culture, and instruction. So your school hosted an AVID showcase for the Eastern Division and schools from all over Maryland were able to come in and see your school and the AVID strategies taking place there. It was evident throughout the day that the commitment really starts with leadership, especially the principal and their buy-in. This is my third year here. Uh, my first year here was the first year that we started implementing AVID. So we've got on this journey together. Um, it has been a significant journey over the course of the three years to the point where now we are really, AVID has become part of our school culture. It is really embedded here at Point Pleasant Elementary School and it is who we are. That would not have happened if not for the teacher leaders that I'm going to introduce to you now. They have taken AVID and really run with it. They've been given that platform to lead and they have done it. Ms. Becky Yost and Ms. Mary Fuchella. In Anne Arundel County Public Schools we call teachers rock stars and they are indeed rock stars. Without them, none of this is possible. Teacher leaders also echoed the importance of principal buy-in and leadership and also shared vision among faculty and staff. We could not do this without our principal support. It is our culture of our school and every teacher knows that's our expectation to bring AVID into their classrooms and it does definitely help that there's two of us. I'm a general educator, Becky's special ed, we can meet with all of the teachers. We have our monthly committee meetings where we reflect on our goals and things and we'll get more into that. Also, AVID strategies are it is implemented in our school improvement plan, which really helps. And then we have strategies shown at all of our PD, leadership meetings, SIP meetings. We give teacher feedback at our meetings and we also have clear expectations. And then we also give our teachers the freedom to try new ideas, to look in the book. What can they include in their lessons each day? Chris, what is it about the AVID program that made you buy in with such a high level of implementation? Well, as a first year principal, I really um, was um, interested in implementing a program that provided research-based strategies for all students and that is proven to improve student achievement. So the buy-in for me was, was pretty much instant. I went to the mm -hmm. Summer Institute. Um, I really loved what I was hearing and what I was learning and I thought that would be a great thing for the students at Point Pleasant Ele Elementary School. Yeah, and lucky for them. Mary, what made you want to buy into AVID Elementary? So the first glimpse of AVID for me was at the Summer Institute and hearing the student success stories I wanted that same success mm -hmm. for my students. And then when I was at the training, hearing the techniques, I felt like they were easy, I could use them in any subject, and I was ready to model them for my students and then for also teachers at my school. And uh, Becky, same to you, but also, especially in special education, where do you see AVID Elementary fitting? Um, with special ed kids, the organization piece from AVID has been really helpful with them. 
um, is the color coding and the binders and the agendas, keeping them on track. Mm -hmm. um, it also helps with specialized instruction um, with comprehension goals for their IEPs. We can use Cornell notes, Sprayer models, um, and also different strategies for them to collaborate with their peers. Um, with their sharing out, it gives them a sense of ownership and a part of the group, which I think that every kid should feel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the biggest things I know when it comes to implementing something brand new are the systems that really need to be in place. And if those systems aren't quite there, we're probably not going to have continued growth for a program. Your school really did an amazing job planning for implementation and continued growth throughout. And what we were going to do with it, but that institute definitely energized all of us um, and got us fired up and ready to go. Um, and so that first year, we decided that we were going to just start with two grades. We did fourth grade and fifth grade. We picked those grades because one, Ms. Wachella was part of the fourth grade team, and two, fifth grade was a great team and would buy in and would do anything that we wanted to do or ask of them. So they would be a successful team. So those first two started off, um, and we started off with a committee that we'll talk about as well for Abbott Committee. And through that, we decided we just wanted to focus on organizational binders and two to three column notes. Start off small, start off easy. And what we found each year moving forward is that even though those were just our goals, we ended up doing more and more and more, like one pagers and DLIQs, and it just progressed. Um, and then towards the end of that year, we started talking to third and second grade and kind of started prepping them that, hey, next year you guys are going to be part of this. And um, second grade was a little hesitant about binders, and so it took those a couple months of prep, 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 and then working with them to come up with a rubric um, to follow up with that. The second year, we did a training in Anne Arundel County, where Av Avid did, for anyone in the county to come, and we got a lot of our teachers to sign up for that. All of our cultural arts teachers signed up, um, the second, all the second grade team, third grade team, and then the only people that couldn't go to that were our new teachers for fourth and fifth grade because that was new teacher orientation. But again, it was right towards the end of summer and beginning of when the teachers come back, so again, everyone was pumped and ready to go and use those strategies in, um, in our schoolhouse. Um, and then third, our third year, starting this third year, we trained two first grade teachers and the two new fifth grade teachers that weren't trained um, the year before. And first grade, again, was real hesitant. Eh, I don't know, I don't know about these pencil pouches, I don't know, just, and the pencil pouches are just like what we decided as a school that we wanted to be structured, like the non-negotiables. Um, but again, they went to Philadelphia, and they got the training, and then like, you'll see first grade hallway is amazing, and like they're all on it. You'll talk to a first grade teacher later and get her input on, on, on her perspective of things. And then we came and we just said, all right, we're doing full school pre-K, autism, cultural arts, and we um, adjusted rubrics and we did what we had to do and kind of keep pushing through. Your team obviously has a very intentional strategy and focus when it comes to rolling out new strategies. Can you tell us a little bit about how strategies build over time? Yeah, so our first year we started off small, just having our fourth and fifth grade students using the strategies, but we had an AVID committee where we included fourth grade teachers, fifth grade teachers, then a third and second grade teacher because we knew the next year that we would be implementing these strategies in second and third grade. And each year we have a new strategy that we're bringing on for each grade. So then our second year, second and third grade were also included. And then this year, our third year, the whole school is using the AVID strategies. So now that the whole school is using the AVID strategies, how are teachers and students supported in their use? Um, again, it goes back to our AVID committee. Um, that those group of people, we put our resources together, um, some from our AVID liaison meetings, some from um, UN DOT coming out and doing PDs for our school. Um, we also have um, different rubrics that we've created for each one of our goals that have been scaffolded depending on the grade mm -hmm. and the expectation for that grade. Our binder checks for fifth grade looks very different from our binder checks in first grade. Um, also, the Cornell notes are differentiated as well. 
So what a first grader is expected to do on a one pager or, um, or a Cornell note is very different from what the intermediate grades would be expected. And that's communi communicated through the grade level because like Mary said, we have a representative from each grade level that communicates that message back to the teachers. So it sounds like they have a lot of support. And I wonder with that support, Chris, have you seen in instruction any impacts from all of the strategy use and AVID implementation? We have. We've seen a lot of, a lot of positive impact um, across all grade mm -hmm. levels within our school. I see uniform structures and strategies being implemented throughout the entire instructional day, which is really wonderful. It's not just in math or language arts. It's within all the subject areas. So the buy-in is there. And we have seen over the course of the past two years increased student achievement. Um, our FMP scores have increased tremendously over the past two years. We've gone from seventh out of eighth in our cluster to second out of eighth. Our park scores, ELA scores, have increased by 10% from 30% roughly to almost 40% um, in two years. And our math scores have increased by 5%. So we're seeing um, achievement on the rise within our school. And, uh, and I can honestly say that I believe a lot of that has to do with the buy-in um, to AVID. And I think during the day of the showcase, you really could see that rigorous thinking and engagement happening for students in the classroom. I just got finished working with my teacher, and now I'm working on my notes. And I've already finished my notes. Now I'm just trying to find why Chapter 3 is an important chapter in the book. And I'm working on that that but I can't figure out but I I just started so I still have to go back in the book and figure it out. Um, I think AVID across the county is a very strong program and it definitely showed today with overall student engagement in the classes, um, classroom management strategies that were in place uh, and just an overall feel in the building that was warm inviting and really structured around rigor, rigorous instruction for kids. So how do teachers grow in, in these instructional strategies and is there any opportunity for them to help each other grow as well? Yeah, so during collaborative planning there's an expectation that we should be sharing AVID strategies. We have collaborative planning during mm -hmm. reading for reading and math and teacher leaders should be sharing strategies that can be implemented into the classroom. Also we have work displayed all over our school where teachers can see what different grade levels are completing and Fourth grade teachers can go look at a second grade's work and understand what their expectations are for them to understand what theirs should also be. Mr. Gordon also provided us opportunity as a school mm -hmm. to break off um, in our grade levels to go around after school to look at the different work displays, to go into the classrooms to see what AVID displays and which work is, was up. And then we came back as a grade level um, to reflect on what we saw what our next steps could be, how we could do that or use that in our classroom. And that has been very helpful for the teachers to also, that haven't, had, haven't been trained, to also get excited and pumped up and ready to use AVID in their classroom for, for academic purposes. Absolutely, and I think some of that excitement also comes when we hear it from the mouths of our students. So uh, you guys got to hear from Jayla Richardson during the showcase, and we'll just share a few moments of her thoughts with you as well. Hi, my name is Jayla Richardson and I'm a fifth grade student at Point Pleasant Elementary School in Glen Burnie, Maryland. This is our third year of having AVID. This is what our school looked like before we had AVID. And this is what our school looks like now. I know it looks like our school has not changed, but it has changed a lot in these past three years. Adding AVID to our school has made it a better for teachers and students. It has made a better and easier learning place. When I was thinking about how to tell you about AVID, I thought I would ask some of the important people in our school. Students at our school have noticed a positive change since AVID added to our school. Jonathan Russell and Elena Wolf are fifth graders at my school. Elena said, I think AVID is what keeps me organized. I, I also think AVID is preparing you for when you get older. Jonathan said, AVID stands for Amazing, Visionary, Individual, and Daring. Amazing because it because it helps with learning and learning is amazing. Visionary because you know what you well, you know what you want it to look like. Individual because you can only organize and daring because it's a challenge. Alex Z, a fourth grader at my school says, Avin makes it easier and all you have to do is put name 
a date, a subject, and a color dot depending on the subject. No more lost papers at Point Pleasant Elementary School. Teachers have noticed a positive change too. Ms. Puckett, a third grade teacher at my school said, AVID helps my students get focused, organized, and motivated. They call, the callbacks help with the focus and motivated. Cornell, Cornell notes and finders help them to learn organization, an important life skill. Fifth grade teacher Mr. Malt said, as a new teacher, it helps my class and me stay organized. When I was in high school, I had AVID, and it's so cool. And it's nice to see the AVID strategies used in elementary school. You're probably wondering what our parents have noticed. Ms. Taylor, a mom of a second grader, says, I love that I can check my daughter's agenda book each and every night to know exactly what needs to be done. So that way we can work on the things that she needs help with at home as well. When I asked my mom about how AVID, she helped, she, how AVID helped me, she said, AVID has helped Jayla grow as a student. It has given her strategies to secure her honor roll status and, as, and reach principal's honor roll too. AVID helps students with skills that help them in their classes. It's also nice to communication between parents and teachers too. AVID is helping me to be a, my best academic self. Our principal is really proud of what AVID is doing for our school. Mr. Gordon, who is here today, says AVID created uniform structures across grade levels that increase the student achievement. I like to see that I like to see the organization through the through the use of binders. I love to see the two column notes and AVID strategies used daily with Fiddly. Staff buy in through what they bring back from um, AVID trading. H has AVID Come, become a part of our culture at our school. Our school is full of first-generation college students waiting to make their mark on the future. Our graduating fifth graders are heading to middle school this year armed with organization and note-taking muscles. They are marking the text like professionals. Many of our students will continue AVID after middle school as elective students, but all of our students will enter middle school better prepared and armed with skills for success. Point Pleasant Elementary School students will be the last first generation college students in their families. When people ask about AVID, this is AVID. AVID Elementary changes a school and its students. AVID is a better prepared students to reach their goals. Look at me in my last year of elementary school. This is AVID. When visiting Point Pleasant, it's really easy to see that students are already thinking about college. Do you think it's a stretch for such young students to already have their thoughts there? It's never too early for students to think about college. Daily we have students make long and short-term goals and college should definitely be one of their long-term goals that they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. I think we're, as, as when we were kids we were always told you could do and be anything that you want to be and we were told that from early age so we need to tell our students as well, every single student in that building that they can do and be anything that they want to be if they work hard enough they can achieve that and so constant mo reminders of college throughout our school like our reading groups are college we have a college row we have a college dorm room um, that the kids can earn for incentives just to always kind of let them know that that possibility is a reality that they can have so about the dorm room uh, Chris can you tell us a little bit more about your idea to have a dorm room within sure. your school? Um, we you know, at Point Pleasant Elementary School we love celebrating student yeah. success so a as an avid school we thought what better way to do that and to create a dorm room. So we have a room that we call a dorm room that is decorated similar to what a college dorm room would be decorated um, as. Um, we have pennants up, we have college everywhere. Um, kids are able to earn um, trips to the dorm room. For example, if they increase an FMG reading level, they can um, go to the dorm room. If they're the high dojo point winner of the week, they can access the dorm room. Um, Ms. Lively and I, our assistant principal, have a class of the week. So what we do is throughout the week, we we go through our classrooms, we look for avid infusion, we look for students that are working really hard and um, dedicated to their work, and then we nominate that entire class for a trip to the dorm room. So it's actually become quite a big hit at our school, and, and the students really love it, so we're going to keep, keep it going. I love it, and I was lucky enough to get to see it myself, and it's a really special place and so unique for our kids. Becky and Mary, I know that while Chris helped with some of the details of the showcase, 
How did you guys feel about hosting it? What, what went into leading up to hosting such a large scale event, which we mentioned had visitors from all over Maryland and visitors of important from our own district as well. Um, so how did, how did it feel leading up to, during and after? Um, I think leading up, we were very excited. We were also very nervous. Yeah. Um, I don't think we knew quite the success that it would be. We thought just a couple people, because the year prior we had done walkthroughs for the school on a smaller scale. Um, but sitting with Mr. Gordon and just thinking about the, the little details about getting the people checked in and letting the teachers know, you know which routes we were coming and all that, um, down to the decorations on the table. Mm -hmm. We wanted to show how amazing our students and how awesome our teachers are that are implementing these Abbott strategies that we um, planned very hard for it and it was very successful. I think we were very happy mm -hmm. with the turnout. Mm -hmm. And we were excited that our students and our teachers alike could show off their great strategies that they've been using throughout the school year. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you too that the guests were incredibly impressed as well. Well, hello everyone. We are here today at Point Pleasant Elementary School in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Um, and we had a wonderful showcase today with over 25 participants from all over the state of Maryland to come and see the wonderful things that are happening here at Point Pleasant Elementary School and AVID implementation. Today we got to hear an overview of the school, um, their journey with AVID, um, their history with how it began three years ago. We heard from a wonderful student, Jayla, this morning who gave us her perspective on how AVID has impacted her school, her community, um, and her as a student. And we also learned more about the strategies that go into um, implementing AVID with Fidelity across grade levels, all the way from pre-kindergarten to fifth grade. And so we just came back from our classroom visits, as you can see a little bit uh, behind me. There are people debriefing, excited about what they've learned. They're ready to go back to their home schools and districts and talk about the things that they've seen today. And it's all thanks to the wonderful team at Point Pleasant Elementary School under the guidance of Principal Gordon. I was really excited to participate in today's AVID Showcase at Point Pleasant Elementary School. I'm the principal at Marley Middle School, which Point Pleasant feeds into. And today was super helpful because now we see what strategies and activities our elementary school students are being prepared for that they can come and use at middle school when they join us. Well, so much exciting stuff has happened already, but can you tell me about your next steps for AVID at Point Pleasant? We're continuing the journey on this school year and into next, and we are really looking forward to embedding professional development opportunities mm -hmm. within our professional development calendar, so that's something that we're very mindful of to continue the growth of our school. Um, collaborative planning, um, PD opportunities. We're just going to continue to get better and better about um, what we're doing as a school as far as implementing AVID strategies. Raise money for our AVID t-shirts for our students and then also gives us different supplies throughout the school year. And then we're also excited about um, more of our newsletters, implementing those out to our students and being able to showcase their strategies for their peers and then also for their parents to see monthly. What has the newsletters, I knew that that was new and something you want to mm -hmm. continue to do. How do you think that's brought in the parents and the community? I think both the newsletters and the fundraisers, mm -hmm. we did fundraisers at McDonald's for Abbott night, mm -hmm. uh, McTeacher night, um, mm -hmm. and then we wore our Abbott shirts and the teachers came, or the parents came out and asked us questions about Abbott. Um, the newsletter has really like spiked the interest of the parents, like, oh, we've heard about Abbott in middle school. What does Abbott look like for a first grader? And mm -hmm. it opens up those, um, lines of communication um, where we did Abbott in our back to school night this year. Um, we really want to reach out to the community and the newsletter starts that process for us. Um, and then hopefully moving forward, um, we can have the community in, like we were talking about, like having a spaghetti dinner or, or something to come in and then really showcasing the kids work during that time where everyone can just be social and build our relationships mm -hmm. um, through that through the using Abbott at our school. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. I know that we're so excited to continue to see the work of Point Pleasant um, with Abbott within Point Pleasant. And I know we look forward to seeing the next showcase from you all as well. And just for all the wonderful things that we know are gonna come, come from you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in to Abbott Achievers. Join us again on our next show.